you know that some of you had visited um, and seen us in action. Usually I have the keyboard out and I'm singing. I lead us in praise and worship. And we go into the Word. We have a good time. Real intimate time. And sometimes those who would like to meet with me after the service, we would go to just the corner there on, on 4th and South Street where there was a Starbucks. And I call that my satellite office. I'd sit there and uh, over some coffee or some tea. And I get to hear some things about you and learn more about you. And what what is and what is it that I can do for you? You know, often I'll ask you, you know, as your pastor, you know, I know what my assignment is. And sometimes people who join a church or or are drawn to this ministry are don't know the servant leader relationship. And you don't understand this relationship. And sometimes the things you don't understand, you often will uh, abuse it. Um, and, and abuse is two words, mean abnormally use it to abuse. You'll abuse a relationship. And sometimes we abuse other relationships because you didn't really know what it was for. You didn't really know how to. You had some conceived notion in your mind. Maybe you got it off the streets or some other kind of way you, you received that bit of information. But um, those are times where I can communicate to you what this means, what my, what my assignment is and who I am to you, right? And my job is to pray over you. My job is ultimately, according to Jeremiah, the Lord said, for I've given you pastors after my own heart. That's right. Let's just look at that. Things 31. Um, thank you, Jesus. We're already getting into the word. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah, and this is in the Old Testament. Um, and we're just starting off, y'all. If you have your Bible, I told you you should have your Bible. So we can just go right into the Word. Um, Jeremiah chapter 3. Let's see here. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. And this is in line of what, you know, just the introduction to what I'm sharing here today. Um, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. God says, And I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding and that's the job of a pastor that's my assignment to you is that every time you're in my presence and every time we are together and every time I'm up to speak and to share um, it is my ob obligation and my duty to communicate and to socialize knowledge and understanding and particularly as it relates to the word of God and as we begin to walk together you begin to learn more and how this word of God correlates to many things that are happening in the world today and sometimes we, we, we don't you don't see the correlation that's why some people fall away from the faith because they they haven't been able to make the connection God bless you uh, sister Tracy love you much um, the, the, a lot of times people haven't been able to make the connection and so they fall away you know the things most things we don't understand we we inherently become adversarial against that's right some of you uh, think about it when you were a child you did not understand um, especially if you were being disciplined you didn't understand your parents or why why this why that and so when you don't understand that, you will buck against that. You know, if they're giving you instructions, you're not trying to hear that because you don't, you don't necessarily understand their purpose in your life. You know, some children want to run away from home. I felt that way at one time. It didn't last long, but <laughs> it comes and goes because we don't understand. When my mother was disciplining me for this or that or the other thing, I thought she didn't like me. And I didn't, I didn't understand why. And so, you know, my words were, listen, when I get older, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. You know, where are you going to go? You know, and, and nothing could be further from the case. My mother loved me, right? 
and um, but these are these are things that are associated with uh, adolescence and immaturity and sometimes we're immature very immature when it comes down to the things of God we're mature toward a lot of other things but when it comes down to the things of God we just because you know if you haven't attended first of all Sunday school I was going to say uh, 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 seminary or some uh, official uh, Bible school or what have you. You don't even need that in, in per, per se. As a believer, one of the things you should have had in your life is an initial formal, formal teaching and training of the Word of God as believers. If you're not a believer, then okay. Because you got other faiths that make sure that their children are inducted into the doctrine that we teach, whether it be a Muslim, whether it be a Hinduist, whether it be um, um, a Buddhist, what have you, those children, you know, the, the, the goal is to get your children to embrace that at a young age so that it, it's not hard pressed for them to pursue it as an adult. Now, we know Christ is the way, right? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So, the, the, but we have a lot of Christians often that haven't had that formal training, haven't had that formal introduction to the Word of God. But we're here now. Somebody say we're here now. Come on, we're already in the text. Come on, say we're here now. Before I get ahead of myself, look at this. I'm going to read it one more time. Um, Jeremiah 3 and 15, he said, well, I'll give you, I will, I will. God said he'll do this. I'll give you pastors according to my, my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that's interesting that God says, I'm assigning pastors and lead, spiritual leaders to your life according to my heart. Now you gotta be connected to God to pick that up because sometimes we may ascribe someone to be someone to ourselves based on somebody else's heart or someone else's agenda. You know, be, be careful for, for those who say, you know, uh, I wanna be your pastor, I want to, or you know, quit that church and, and come over here with me, and and be, be watchful of those things. You'll never hear me say that. And and most of the pastors that I know that the network in which I am connected don't talk like that, because we know this is something that God does, and I like it when God does it because when God does it, I don't I don't have the onus, you know, the responsibility of a pulling your ear. And convicting you and making you stay that's the job of the Holy Spirit my job is to give you understanding and knowledge as it relates to the Word of God and hopefully as we go along that knowledge will will um, will appropriate itself with the times and the seasons that we're living in you can be able to hear a lesson and and compare it to what's happening in the world today so, oh my god you know I never would have known that and and then and the Lord and the light bulb begins to turn on all right so um, be, be, be watchful of those. Our text for today uh, was in, in 1 John. Now that, that was just a little introduction. Um, and I may go back to that because I'm always, um, <laughs> I, I, as a pastor, I'm always advocating for the fellowship. That's my job. That's my assignment. Among many assignments. As a pastor, every time I'm on the screen, every time I'm on the floor, of momentum and we're, we're sharing the word of God I'm always advocating for the fellowship yes I am you know some people will, will avoid pastors because they know that they you know, they avoid the priest because you know you hadn't been in church <laughs> for a couple months or a couple of weeks or, so there he is you, you, you don't want to be seen because you think the first thing they're going to come out of your mouth oh I haven't seen you you know there, there's father so and so Go, let's go on the next aisle I think it was on uh, King and Queen's uh, episode of uh, Doug and Carrie. <laughs> they saw one of the fathers of the, the of the uh, parish at the market, and they were trying to avoid him so bad that they were like, "Oh no, 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 no! Don't go over there! Don't go over there!" Because they knew the first thing that was going to come out, or one of the things that were going to come out of his mouth, is that I haven't seen you. You know when? You know how long has it been since your last confession? And you know the things according to the Catholic faith and what have you. It's kind of funny. Um. <laughs> And, and so it is sometimes, you know, when you see your pastors, you know, you see them along the way. You haven't been in church a long time. And, and sometimes you're not careful. Your flesh will cause you to avoid them 
because you think they're going to bring that up. And sometimes it is appropriate to bring up. You need to be reminded. I haven't seen you in church in a while. Is everything okay? Now, I often will call and reach out to people, you know, and, and just to make sure you're okay. Because I know the enemy and even our own flesh works hard against the things that we're doing today. All right. So listen here. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, um, the, the word reads as follows. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Let me read it again, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. The scripture reads, These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, and, and you attending today, I trust that you believe in Jesus or you wouldn't be here. That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So we don't take our belief system for granted because there's a lot of things out here. They're very subtle that can cause you to disbelieve. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 11, it says, Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the end of the world are to come. So the things that we read, the stories, all of the stories throughout the 66 books in the Bible were written for our admonishment. Now admonishment is, 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 to, is to warn you. It's a friendly reminder to do right. It's a friendly reminder to, uh, to, to, to make you aware you know, of the importance and expose you to the importance of the voice of God. Somebody say amen. Right now, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We ask God, the Lord, that you would speak to us today. You've already started to speak and we believe God that you have woke us up for such a time as this. Father, we stand upon your word now. Thank you for our last night lying down and our early morning rising today. This is the Lord's day and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for each, I thank you, God, for each and every one who counted it not robbery to be in this virtual space with me. As we lift up the name of Jesus, you said, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto myself. Draw us, Lord. Draw us closer to you. We want to be closer that we may hear of you, that we may be safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. We don't want to be persuaded by the plans of the enemy. We want to stand upon your word. Teach us, God. We'll listen. Instruct us. And we'll obey. We love you right now, God. And Lord, we ask that you would have your way even in our even in our family, our home. Everything that concerns us, everything that we touch. From our job to our children, our homes, our spouses, our significant others. God, Lord, we ask that you would have your way in these circumstances, in these situations. In these life forms, we ask in the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, O God, in the heaven, in your glory above the earth. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name. Come on, somebody say in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray right now, God, the Lord, as we enter into this session, that you, Lord, would be here with us. You already said it. You said, whether there be two or three gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst. God, thank you for being in the midst of us right now. For we glorify your name. We exalt you, Lord. We extol you now in the name of Jesus. We are available to you. And Lord, as we mature, we've learned to make ourselves available. We once, we once were available because we, we weren't doing much or, and maybe we didn't have the positions or the, the possessions that we have today and, and we were available but now that you've blessed us now we learn to massage our schedules and make ourselves available 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Our storages are empty. Fill us up, Lord, to the overflowing. We ask and we pray right now. God, touch and move upon every, every listener, God, everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray right now, God, that they will receive a good and blessed word from you today. God, somebody who wasn't even going to attend, but they're here now. They're here now. Come on, somebody say, I'm here now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes we, we, we put ourselves in situations and, 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 and don't turn away now. Don't turn back now. Stay connected because God has drawn you to this place for a time, for a season, and for a purpose. So, Father, we thank you for it all. Have your way, God, we ask and we pray right now in the name of Jesus. So that you could fill it up. Now I'm free. I just want to be more available to you. Oh, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to stay. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, everyone, to say it. My storage is empty, and I'm available. And I am available to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of you are available? I hope you hope you picked that up because we've been teaching on that for a couple of months now. The difference between um, uh, once being available and then learning to make yourself available. That's key because as God begins to bless your life, each and every one of us are, are we're a testament. We're a testament to the fact that as God begins to bless us, as we increase in numbers, if we're not careful, we become unavailable. That's right. You know, the more you do, the more you about, and it may be all good things. I'm talking about just, you know, just making stuff up. You know, it's just like going to school and certain things. We all know if you're a student in school, if you're going to do well in school, in the university, certain things have to shut down. All that party life and, and just hanging out and just, you know, and just doing things at the spur of the moment, you know, nights at night, nights of the week where you could just hang out you can't do that anymore because now you have to make yourself available to your studies and to you know your the things that you're concentrating on you you got to focus on that and many of you understand that um so that you can be successful at it and in relationships when you have a relationship with someone and you say that we're we're an item we're steady dates and so now, as you, you know, especially if it goes into um, marriage, you know, you you have to you have to make yourself available. You know, certain things you have plans to do this or that or the other thing. Your wife may ask, or your husband may ask. Listen, we need to go here, or I need you to go here with me. I need this, or you know. And and when those things come up, you know, you you have to you begin to massage your schedule. And it doesn't mean that the other things that you're doing aren't important. It's just that you have to prioritize and you have to manage that schedule so that you make yourself available. Can you type that in if you're here? Can you say, Lord, I make myself available? And so we talked about that. And that comes with maturity, with maturity, right? And sometimes, uh, again, um, I could say so much about that because that's often where we miss, we miss out on growing in, in, in the things of God. It's called, it's called spiritual maturity. Y'all know what that is? You, 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 there, there is higher heights. There, there is maturation associated with your spirituality. There is, there is maturation associated with your, with your, with your spiritual, with your spirituality. And sometimes you didn't know that. Not necessarily unless it were taught. You understand maturation associated with your your physicality. You know, you, you look in the mirror, you don't look the same as you did when you were born. What happened? You grew. You know, your legs got longer, fingers got longer, and nose got bigger. 
and all these things. The teeth you had when you were a baby, you don't have them teeth anymore. They've been replaced. <laughs> They've been pushed out and others came in. And so we understand that in our physicality, but in our spirituality, sometimes we, we don't realize it. Do you realize that in your spirituality, what, what's phenomenal about your spirituality is that you can remain. Watch this. In your physicality, you don't have a choice. You're going to grow. Now, you can, you could, you could, um, you could kind of mess, that's not the word I want to look with, what want to use. You could kind of destroy some of the, uh, the proper flow of your growth by your diet, you know, depending upon what you're, you know, that's why I give children, you know, liquids, give them milk and things that they need. So their grown, their bones will grow and what have you. But what the phenomenon with your, your, your physicality is that you're going to grow. And sometimes, you know, not sometimes, but independent of you, whether you like it or not, you know, you could buy those $200 Tims for little Jimmy all you want because you want him to, you know, look fly. Okay, his feet ain't this butt this big, but you spent $250 for him to have some Timberlands on because you wanted him to have them. Okay, but you know he's not going to be able to fit those in about a year and sometimes about six months because they're growing. So independent of you, but your spirituality, it does depend on uh, certain exercises, certain things, the word of God, lest you remain stymied. So you can remain small as a child in your, in your spiritual. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, think about your, your, your mental capacity. Do you, there are some people who are full, a full age, and yet in their mind, they're still a child. Remember, your physicality is, is going to grow. You're going to grow. But when we think about our mental state, our mental state can be stymied. It, can be, it, 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 it requires communication. It requires education. That's right. It requires massaging and, and, and reading books. That's why I say reading is fundamental. You know, it requires, and if you don't do these things, you could actually cause a, a mindset to be totally inconsistent with the physicality that you see. You can see a grown person. Have you ever seen that before? I have. They're older than you or me. When they open up their mouth, the way they think, the way they talk, they talk like a baby. What happened? Now, sometimes that may be related to some uh, some mental retardation or or some deficiency in their brain, and and thereby you have what I'm talking about. But the brain is the same way. Your brain could often be the same way if, if, if you hadn't gone to school, if you weren't exposed to things that will cause you to grow. That's right. Don't take for granted. You know, the things you, you your swagger and all of that is all based upon input. You saw it. And even before you saw it, when you went to school, that's why it was so important in school to read, write, and, 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 to, and to learn because it helps you develop thought and ideas. Even your ideas, to put them on paper. You learn that in grade school, and as you got older, you, you, you begin to exercise that. And then as you read book, you begin to, you begin to learn other people's ideas and have an appreciation for how they form their thoughts. And then you, you, once you make it to the university, then you begin to develop critical thinking, where now you, you can be able to just differentiate between thoughts of error and thoughts of truth differentiate between uh, thoughts of success and thoughts of failure mm -hmm. and, and as you and, and as you compare that with life experience now you can also identify with the author's words based on an experience that you can relate to so what happens it becomes intelligible to you that's right Whenever I talk about making intelligible your past, God, the Holy Ghost helps you do that as well. And that is being able to look back over your life and gain an understanding of why it is I am the way I am today. That's making intelligible. Because if you can't make intelligible your past, you'll often be very frustrated in your present and misguided in your future. 
That's right. That's right. Frustrated in your presence because you don't understand. Why am I here? Why am I like this? Why am I, why am I thus? <laughs> As a, a passage of scripture in the Old Testament. It's a woman that said, why am I thus? Why am I like this? And you might not agree with why you're that, but, but I'm telling you, it, it, it kind of chills you out. When you are able to gain an understanding, and that understanding is based upon experience that you can relate to, may, ha, thus having been made intelligible. Come on, somebody type it in. Say, Lord, make intelligible my past. Can y'all type that in? <laughs> Say, Lord, make intelligible my past. Because when he does that, I'm going to tell you what, what God is doing. By, by, by Even through these lessons, even through this teaching, what God is doing, he's helping you gain an understanding of why it is you are the way you are today, why your situation is the way it is. You know, no, nothing just happens. The, the, the Proverbs says, the curse causeless does not come. In other words, the curse does not come without a cause. That situation that 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 abusive boyfriend or that relationship or this this stuff didn't come without a cause now you might not be able to c connect the dots but god can come on somebody say lord i want to connect the dots come on turn around and tell your neighbor <laughs> come on y'all gotta act like we in church y'all come on turn turn around and tell your neighbor say say connect the dots Turn, your, turn around and tell your other neighbor, Lord, connect the dots. Connect the dots. God can do it. But see, you have to have faith to believe it. And this is why we come together. And this, again, is my assignment. Out of Jeremiah, I read it to you. He said, the, the Lord said, I will give you pastors after my heart. Right? Who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what God said in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. He said that, that, that because God cares about you. So don't, don't take this for granted. Again, I'm, I'm advocating for the faith and I'm advocating for the government of the Lord's church. He said in Ephesians, and Jesus said, or Paul was saying this regarding the Lord. He said, for he has given to the church some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why did he give that to the church? Why did he give that to the church? Why is he still giving that to the church? Why is that a part of the church? He said that he may feed you with knowledge and understanding and that we may all come to the unity of the faith. There's things that we're just going to have to understand. And those things are, are, are acquired and picked up by preaching. If, 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 we, if, we, if we're honest with ourselves, some of the things that we have embraced with great conviction from over time, it has been hurled unto us. Somebody stood on a platform and said it and you picked it up. Well, don't find that strange. That's part of our human, um, far, part of our, our culture uh, globally as human beings. We've always put somebody up on a podium to hear what they have to say that, that we may be persuaded into a better way. Even of old, you, you have... Uh, uh, had um, philosophers and, and many who, who, when they stood up and they taught people would gather around, intelligent minds would stand around and listen to what they have to say with, with the intent, with, with positive intent, that what they might say, you know, we, we, we esteem them as being endowed with some, some special knowledge. Something intriguing is going to come out of them. They're mirror men like we are and women like we, you know, they're, they're, they're just mirror men as, as we are. And, and so they don't have to be superstars per se, but we understand that they have been endowed with, 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 with the words that, that so depict, that make intelligible things that I can relate to. Whether it be a comedian, you know, one of my comedians that, uh, that I admire is Kevin Hart. And amongst many, you know, because I, I watch him, we've all seen his his progression um, as as becoming an entertainer as he is today. But to stand on 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 a stage and have, you know, over four hundred, five hundred thousand people in in an, in an arena, just to hear him for an hour, Lord knows, I would love to be. <laughs> I would love it. I ain't got no jokes, but I got this right. Um, I can tell some jokes. Um, <laughs> but 
for an hour to tell jokes. People pay great money. What are, what are you doing? Now, I don't find that's not strange because that is associated with the culture of the human family, if you will. That's global, worldwide. That's not something just indigenous to the church. It's always been that way. It's always been that way. And where do we get it? Well, we got it from God. It was God in the Old Testament that told Moses to tell the people to prepare themselves, to come to the mountain that I may speak to them. And God, there was always a gathering, Mount Sion and Mount Zion. The people of God, would, would wa he told them to wash their clothes. So there was a preparation there. To come to the mountain for what? Why? That God may speak to them all at once. All at once. And, and, and the thing is, we what we were going to hear from God and, and then what we were going to hear from Moses who spoke to God we were going to obey you know we can read for ourselves we can do but but we knew that we, we, we realized that this impartation is something that we entertain that we might grow spiritually that's right you do it for many many other things you'll go see your favorite artist y'all know it even if you whoever it is by the time your artists get on that stage with the guitar with the song you know, they're going to sing something, whether it's your favorite song, and you prepared yourself, right? You went you went to the mall, you bought that, that favorite outfit, and you got together with your girlfriends, and, and y'all went to the, to, to the, to the uh, concert. And you were there, and the artists came out, and they began to blow up the stage, and then lighting and everything, and they began to sing, and, and oh, man, that was my jam. Before you know it, you left there elated. Your voice is probably sore or hoarse because you done sang out, ah, so trying to sing with the artists and, and dance a little bit and sweat it and cry it or whatever else happened. Because on the stage, that whole platform was designed to, to socialize a thought, an idea to you that you may grow spiritually and that it may have an impact on your spirituality can do not much for your your physicality because you're already grown. There's nothing that the artist can say can make your legs be longer and make your nails grow. Can't do anything with that. But what they can do, they can they can deal with your soul. The soul. And the soul is your 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 mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. These three things constitute your soul. So we've always embrace things that were herald to us you know some of the things we quote from Martin Luther King most of us know of his speech and and you know I have a dream and what are, what are some of the, the the key talking points that you all remember that one day we we will not be judged by the color of our, our skin but the, the 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 content of our character and the other little sound bites and things that uh, even Malcolm X had said by any means necessary. Everybody, if you don't know anything, everyone knows that. And the ballot or the bullet and some of the other things that were heralded unto us as a people. We pick those things up and they become mantras unto us. And later you read it in a book, but but I mean, it, it, it was heralded and we picked it up and you ran with it. Well, don't find that strange. That's part of our design. That's part of our culture as a human family. God started that. All the way back in the Old Testament, all the way from the beginning, from the time he told them to come to the mountain that he may speak. And as the leaders and judges and rulers of many different kingdoms and what have you, all stood on a platform that they may communicate. And prophets and philosophers are, and by doing such, they help massage and form the, 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 the culture, the, the mind of the people. Our prayer is, is that in, in the house of God, that what you hear is what Paul would call sound doctrine. That means you can trust it because sometimes you, you can hear things that are not trustworthy. Watch this. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, now Paul's talking to Timothy. Timothy was... Timothy was a um, he was a young pastor and Paul's talking to him uh, let's see here in verse 12 thank you Jesus um, God bless you Leslie you know I love you so glad to see you here today and each and every one of you who are in attendance who haven't 
typed anything in. God bless you. Um, what did I say? Second Timothy, um, chapter one and verse twelve. He said, "For which cause I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm I am not ashamed, for I know in whom I believe, and am persuaded he is able to keep." that which I committed unto him against that day. Now he says, I suffer these things. What things? Well, uh, suffering means to, un uh, to, to, uh, to undergo or to be subjected sometimes to an injury or loss or anything that's unpleasant. And there's some unpleasant things that, that we've been dealing with. You know, if it be not but the big obvious, which is 2020, pandemic, COVID-19, and and so forth and, and so forth and on. Um, Paul says, "Nevertheless, I suffer these things." He says, "I am not ashamed, for I know in whom I believe that that he is able to keep that which I commit unto him against that day." All right, and so we're talking about our life and every and our faith. I'm trusting in God. I, I suffered. In other words, I'm not. I'm not going to be moved by the things that I'm seeing. I'm going to suffer it to be so. That as I pursue God, in other words, I'm not necessarily discount, discounting the realities in my mind by by ign ignorance and ignoring the obvious. I'm not going to ignore the fact that I should wear a mask or people are wearing masks and why they do it. I suffer it to be so. You know, I'm trusting in God. I'm not going through a whole lot of calisthenics over certain things. Uh, you know, choose your arguments. Wearing a mask is not one of one of them. Not going to get into that, but 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 more more than wearing a mask, it's, it's it's other things that that you know that happen as we pursue God, as we begin to uh, make a stand as a believer. You want to suffer some things. You're going to have to disassociate yourself with certain things if you're going to grow spiritually, lest you remain the same. He says that I am persuaded. Now, persuaded is to be in, in, is to induce to believe by appealing to reason or understanding to be convinced. All right, um, and we know these. I just put down the. Um, you know, you're, you're intelligent, folks. You know what it means to be persuaded. But I just kind of give you a little a, 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 a bridge, a definition, kind of broaden our understanding with being persuaded. Being persuaded is 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 uh, I'm allowing myself, even often, even through argument, not shouting, not a shouting match, but internally, you you have some arguments. You, yeah, you have some arguments against certain things as it relates to the Word of God. Surely you do. If you're an intelligent person, and if you have a critical mind, which God has given you, certainly you have arguments. I had arguments, and I still do. And other arguments are positioned by which I, I, I may be opposite to what God may be saying in the Word of God. But it is through that, through my research, and through my prayer, and through my, you know, trusting God, we become persuaded. It's a good persuasion. You know, you're in good hands to be persuaded by God. Amen. All right. Um, again, let me finish reading through here. What I say, um, 2 Timothy chapter 1. He said, For which cause also I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know in whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. So I'm no longer just believing per se. I've been persuaded unto a knowing. Now I know. Now I know. I'm not just kind of, you know, hoping and wishing. Now I know. Verse 13. Holding fast to the form of sound doctrine... Remember, I talked about that, which thou has heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, we're talking about sound doctrine or sound words. He said, holding fast the form of sound words. These are wholesome words, uncorrupt, 
true in doctrine. And, and um, the Lord says in, um, in Revelations, he said, I give you gold tried in fire. In other words, this, the word of God is tried and true. This is how it is in an infallible word of God. It's, it is infallible in its, in, in its use, in its examples, in its, in its theory, if you will. Not that it's theory, it's the truth of God's word. It's tried and true. And it's prophecies. It's sound. It's trustworthy. You could take it to the bank. When when uh, Proverbs says, chapter 3, he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You can trust that. You can take that to the bank. You can disbelieve it all you want. But the word of God, and as we know it, the, the, the doctrine of God's word, the teaching of God's word, it is tried and true. It has saved many man's lives. It saved my life. And still yet, I'm still yet a recipient to the salvation of God based on the teaching of scripture. That's right. The whole book of Proverbs was designed to teach wisdom. That's right. To teach wisdom. And so you, you, you do well. As, like I said, every day of the week, every day of the month, you should be reading a chapter out of the book of Proverbs so that you can glean upon the, 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 the wisdom. Because this, this wisdom is it's, it's based on a relationship with God. And God knows best. All right. Hold fast to the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus that good thing that good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us now in in um, 1 Corinthians chapter I keep feeling like I'm a sneeze grab my nose 1 Corinthians chapter 6 um, in verse 18 it says flee fornication and everything every sin that a man doeth is doeth is without the body but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body now just hold on to that because I'm taking you to verse 19 he says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which ye have of God and you are not your own for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And the reason why I said that, because here he says in verse 14 in 2 Timothy, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwells inside of you. So we're keeping these, these principles of God's word. It is being maintained and sustained. The sustainability associated with our faith, our belief system, has to be done by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, with help of the Holy Spirit, that we may be maintained. You know, Acts 1 and 8 say, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that you may be witnesses. So our sustainability impacts our ability our witness that people may be persuaded by your life Re remember we're ambassadors for Christ and we are living epistles being read by men some people may not ever walk in that church they may not read a bible but they know you're a believer and so they they pay attention to you and and we should be good adver advertisement for the kingdom they might not listen to pastor Dave Maybe they look at me and see me with the collar on and, and think I'm old and foggy. And that's that's old school. Oh, that's old school. I, you know, but they but they'll follow you. So now the spotlight is on you in their eyes. So what are you going to show? Them? How sinful you can be? Or are you going to let let the glory of God shine upon your life? Are you going to allow yourself to be filled up enough with God's wisdom and his word so that everything that comes out of you you know, it won't be hard pressed to get you to be godly. It shouldn't have to be that way. You you have to keep pinching yourself and and going through a bunch of changes. No, if you if you walk with the Lord, and in the light of His Word, 
The, the psalmist said, what a glory he sheds on the way. And while we do his good will, he abides with us still and with those who will trust and obey. The Lord will do this, right? So you don't, you don't have to make it up. You don't have to make it up. So these things, uh, so in our text, and, and when we started off in our foundation scripture in 1 John chapter 5. He said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Don't take for granted your belief system. You may have a good day in Jesus. You may have a good experience when you first come to the Lord. And you might have, have, have had a good Sunday where you prepare yourself and you got yourself ready. You went to church and the Lord bless you. But let me tell you something. In our reality, there, 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 there are hellhounds on our trail. And there's an, a lot of opposing forces. Subtle they are. Which are designed to pull you out of the fellowship. And to get you busy about doing many, many other things and not doing what we're doing right now. But I thank God for each and every one of you who, who, who counted in our robbery to be in this virtual space that you may learn from the word of God. Again, we read also in our text in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, God said, for I've given you pastors after my heart, after his heart, that they may feed you with knowledge and understanding so we could make intelligible our past so we can understand because the things that we don't understand we often become very adversarial against that's right and you don't want to do that not when it comes down to the word of God because you'll you'll, you'll push him away because you don't understand it you'll just push him away you, you, you won't understand it God wants you to understand it Proverbs 16 22 says understanding is a wellspring unto those who have it that's right. Let's look at that. I always quote it. Thank you, Jesus. 1622. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it. But the instructions of fools is folly or foolishness. So God wants you to gain an understanding. I don't take for granted, especially during these times. You know, these are these are these are times we've never seen before. You know, some people are very quick to discount the Lord's church. You've got some prophets of doom. So oh, the church is coming to an end. Oh, you know, we're we're in we're in a post Christian era. You know what that means. That means Christianity is something of the past. Do you know as believers we have an obligation, you do have this obligation, you should uh, embrace it as well. And that is to contend for the faith in every generation. The way it was taught to me when I was a child, you know, my parents and my teachers were entrusting into me that once I was of age, I would also teach that same doctrine. And I am, Lord knows I am. You know, my Sunday school superintendent, um, uh, Mother Henry, Bless her heart. Um, when I was a little boy, she used to always say, you going to preach. you going to preach. She was right. <laughs> she loved me. and uh, But she was just, she was the superintendent of our Sunday school. All, all the years of my young life, my grandfather had her. She was the, but as, as I got older, it got to the point when she was ready to pass the baton. I was honored to take on that mantle and I became the superintendent of the Sunday school of our home church and then we not only had three classes we ended up having five classes in session every Sunday morning we had the little friends of Jesus um, then we had the, the 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 teens we had the well first of all we had the baby the little tots the little friends of Jesus the um, the teens the young adults and the adults. There's a lot of classes there. And um, and as a superintendent, well, the class that I taught in particularly were the uh, the young adults. 
that was that was my my, my I could teach either one of those classes um, but we we would all come together and open up together um, I contended for the faith and I and obviously I still am and in, in those youth that I spoke to to this day a lot of them are grown today uh, my daughter being one of them <laughs> my daughter Leslie was a student also as well and so but my our aspiration and you, you have to understand this that you millennials as well as Tamika and Nikki I, I guess I hope you're there um, you have to contend for the faith in your generation as well we often ask the question if we weren't alive today and if the church was left up to the millennials that we know today where would the church be today I could name some names right now I'm talking about millennials in my family I could start right there and I'm not going to name the names but if I, if I, if I name the names and if Pastor Mark myself Elder Bernard, my, my oldest brother and my sisters and all of us of this generation all five children if we were to vanish away today where, 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 where would this ministry go where would our home church who would take it on and could you take it on do you know enough do you have enough conviction do you have enough love for God to contend for the faith? That's a rhetorical question. I know it sounds kind of scary because I know what it would look like right now. <laughs> I, I, I lie not and tell you the truth. If we would have vanished today, who would pick up a Bible? Well, I know some that would, that would, uh, would have to. But, the, but move all of that aside. Put, ask yourself, because one of the things we used to, we used to, I used to ask the, the students, I said, where would the church be if everyone did what you did? Ooh, come on, don't get offended. Don't tune me out. He said, we're here. God bless you, Nikki. Um, Tamika and Nikki, where would the church be? Where would momentum be? Let's talk about this ministry. Where would it be if it functioned the way you function? If the, the level of commitment to do what God is asking, God has assigned, and with, within, the, within the realm of this assignment, where would it be? That's just a rhetorical question. But the point being is, is if we're honest with that, I ask my daughter Leslie, if the church if the if the church if momentum were to function on your level of commitment where would it be today would anybody get saved would there be a prison ministry hmm. would it be a safe haven for spirituality would it be a place that people can come and be blessed I'm, I'm here to tell you that this is what God wants for us. He wants, you see, the Great Commission. Oh, come on, y'all. This is this is this is. Uh, it may sound like Bible study now, because if I ask you what the Great Commission is, everybody who's a Christian should know this. Tamika, everybody should know this. Nikki, everybody should know this. I'm gonna give it to you, but I'm just putting it out there like this before I go to it. The Great Commission. Remember, in, in the outset of what I was sharing, I said that every believer um, should should at least have had a formal teaching and training of the Word of God. Even if you don't have aspirations to go to Bible school, God didn't call everybody to be a pastor or to be a preacher per se. But we, we still have to know the Word of God. We still have to understand and have an appreciation. And one of the... And, 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 that knowledge is coming through the, the, the word of God, through the teaching, through the stories. There's 66 books in this Bible. And in there you find eight covenants, seven dispensations. You got two main divisions. 
What are the two main divisions? Old Testament, New Testament. That's right. But the Great Commission, what is the Great Commission? What is the Great Commission? Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you what it is. This is so elementary. Leslie, this is like one of those things, like the back of your hand. The, you should be able to just run that right off. Like your social security number. If I ask you all to type it in, don't do that, y'all. <laughs> if I ask you, everybody type in your social, y'all, you just run it. You, you just put it, you just, that just rolls right off your tongue. That's the way the Great Commission should be to every believer, especially as we mature. Now, maybe as a little child, you might not know, but even children learn this. See, these things we learn in Sunday school. All right, turn your Bible to Matthew. Matthew's Gospel. I'm going to give you all the Great Commission, and then we're going to shift and do communion. Leslie, everybody should know this. This is so elementary. I hope you never forget this. Don't ever forget it. Put it on a cue card and fold it up and put it in your wallet once, once you get it. This is the Great Commission. Because if you don't know the Great Commission, you don't know what, what you, you, you won't have an appreciation for the work of ministry and why we do what we do. Because somebody can look at me today and say, why, why are they still doing that? Somebody may look at me and say, this is so corny. Oh, they still, uh, they still trying to, you know, they still trying to keep them, do that spiritual stuff. You don't get it. That's, that's ignorance talking. All right, here's the Great Commission. Everyone say Great Commission. You type it in, Great Commission. All right, here it is. Leslie, Tamika, Nikki, Tracy, and everyone else who, who who's viewing it, I have not, you know, even in Instagram. The Great Commission is found in Matthew chapter 28. Let's look at here. I'm going to start at verse 16 so we get it good. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. Why were there 11? <laughs> A little trivia. I thought there were 12 disciples. Why, why is there 11 here? Y'all should know that answer. And who was the who, who was the 12th one? And why isn't he here? It was Judas. It was Judas. He committed suicide. Because he, you know, he, he became a turncoat. Now, he didn't have to commit suicide. That's a whole nother lesson. All right, that's a little trivia, y'all. Sorry, y'all. Took you off. And then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. They still doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. How many of you believe that? You can stop right there. That's a whole lesson in and of itself. I'm slow walking it for a reason. You have to have a belief system that knows that God has all power. That Jesus has all power. Because the moment you begin to divvy it up and say, well, well, looks like the Republicans, uh, oh, the Democrats, uh, mm or some other great politician or some, well, it looks like uh, Wall Street, uh, looks like, you know, the Rothschilds or, all right. All power. It didn't say some. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Now here's the Great Commission. The Great Commission is right here. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in, and in of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe everything. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world or the age. That's the Great Commission. So you, that should roll off your tongue. If anybody asks you as a believer, what's the Great Commission? Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. That's very elementary. That's as elementary as learning your social security number. That is as elementary as learning where you live. Your address is very elementary. As learning your name. Learning how to spell your name. How about that? 
At one point, you get to learn how to spell. Every child, you, you, one of the things you teach them, not only how to tie their shoe, but teach them how to spell their name. And there's a lot of things you, you have to, we, we make sure children know as a, as, as a child how to articulate, how to speak, how to do this. Very fundamental things because I'm about to send you out the house now. There's certain things you need to know how to do this and how to do that. If, 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 you're, if you're in trouble, if, you, if somebody's messing with you, what do you tell the kids? Go tell an adult. Don't suffer in silence. Go tell somebody. Then that'll work good for the, for today. Because sometimes we, as as an adult, we we, we 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 suffer in silence and won't speak, or share, or won't reach out to someone who's right in front of you. And that's another lesson. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you and long with you even unto the end of the world. This is why we're teaching. This is why we're commanding the things that God has commanded us and what he has commanded us is throughout all 66 books. That's why the pastor is so important. That's why the apostle, the, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastors and the teachers, that's why they're so important. Because as God said in Jeremiah, that they are to feed you with knowledge and understanding as it relates to this word. Find it, think it not strange that most of the things that we embrace has been something that was heralded unto you. You may have heard it over the phone. It may have become a mantra to your life. And you march to the, to the beat of the drum. Something you heard somebody say over the phone. Or you saw it on TV. Maybe some Oprah said and you never forgot it. You never read it in any of her books, but it's just the way it came across. Why, don't think that strange, and, and, and don't push that aside. The Bible said, despise not prophesying. That's in the New Testament, despite, because it comes to a point where we will despise it and hear me preaching and see me here, and, and they will, some people will despise this and say, ah, that's Pat say, we don't need that anymore. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because all you're, all you're really going to do, you're going to turn me off and turn somebody else on. You're either going to serve God or, 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 or man, and to serve God or, or the devil. But the only thing with the devil, you'll serve the devil not knowing. Not knowing. Because it's involuntarily. Often we, we are in sin. We, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, involuntarily. We are brought here this way. But what happens is as we pursue our lives. You don't know until it is revealed to you from the word of God that you are involuntarily supporting the, Satan's agenda. Now some of his agenda is to turn the name from being Satan, from being demonic, to a disorder. He'll turn it from being satanic or demonic to a, 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 a persuasion. He'll change it from being demonic to to from being demonic to being a uh, a preference. Oh, they just prefer to. See, that's 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 see how it, it it's 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 subtle. It's it's deceptive, and you, and you don't know. You begin to embrace things that are demonic, that are satanic, but in the 21st century we we've, we've watered it down and, and made it sound like a disorder or or some soci, uh, sociological um you know or, or 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 some disease or some ailment that you may have or or or, or something associated with your uh just the way you think you just think differently or you or you're this or that or the other thing the bible is still right don't turn this off. Don't discount these things. Amen. So um, if we had a title today, it's, it was that you may believe and keep on believing. Would you type it in? Say, Lord, I still believe. Can y'all say that? Can you say it? Say, Lord, I still believe. Now, for me to say that, I often say that, that, that that's a big thing for me to say that. Lord, I still believe. Why? Because... As I, as, as I, Leslie, as I study, 
And as I read, in many books that I read, not only the Bible, but other books that I read and I hear other authors and, and, and how they interpret uh, and make intelligible their life experiences, whether it be Char Charlemagne the God, and he says he's a Christian, he's a believer, and, 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 but he shares some things that are very deep in terms of his, uh, his, his, uh, n his needing therapy. Uh, mental therapy because a lot of things he had gone through so it just makes it intelligible but as I begin to read other people's experience and how they have come to uh, how they equate to their spirituality um, sometimes if you're not careful they they're, they're, it is their truth I get that but their truth isn't always the truth of God's word uh, in other words it's not always consistent with the path that we should go Amen. Just because your favorite author wrote in the book how sinful they can be, and yet they're still a Christian, that that's not for you to embrace it. Now you can read that, right? You read it objectively, and you you just understand their truth. If anything, you, you pray for them. But holiness is still right. You know that the power of God still does save, heal, and deliver. Now on, on Tuesday we talked about this, so you don't have to stay the same. You don't have to stay the same. Now I can look at my brother, and so again I go back to, and, and I'm always careful to touch on this because we love the brother DMX, and uh, I call it the DMX story. I use that just as a reference to say, you know, he was used in big time, and we believe that he was taken out because he had overdose and whatever else happened to him from that point on. But that that's his truth. And we do celebrate the fact that in the midst of all of that ugly, he still was screaming Jesus, the best that he could do, right? And I thank God for that. But let me tell you, that's not your example. That's not the path that you should go. So don't embrace that. And and because if you're not careful, the the, the enemy will, will will in a very subtle way will will pat you on your back and say, "There, there, you know, see." You, 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 you can stay that way. God still loves you. You don't have to change. You can keep using. DMX did it. He died from it, but, but look how much he accomplished. You know, look at this, look at that. So, oh man, woo. So I'm gonna be all right. He didn't have to die like that. He didn't have to die like that. Like that. That's a whole nother, you know, I can go into but what I'm telling you that God God is still a deliverer. Now, why certain people don't get delivered from certain things is, is a whole nother lesson. And that lesson is not a judge judgment. It's not a pointing of fingers and and, and a pointing down and say, oh, you know, if, if he would have left them drugs alone. God knows I'm not coming like that. All I know is that is God lying or is he telling the truth? He says he's a deliverer. He said he sets men free. But there's a principle to follow. That's right. There's a principle and it's in the word of God. As you receive that knowledge and understanding that comes from the word of God, it is for you to process this. Again, Jeremiah 3.15, closing out. Jeremiah 3.15, we... Uh, we process and we gain an understanding that we may appropriate our path forward and gain it from day to day we, we could slow walk this we got nothing but time in God but the thing is we, we need we need to heed and embrace the things that God is saying that that's teaching us through the word of God amen that you may believe and keep on believing Let's have our community. I hope you have your Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you should have your bread and you should have your juice. It represents the body and blood of our Lord. 
If we were together, I would have you all stand up. I can't wait to... Mm. First Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, I received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. I'm sorry, y'all, I don't want to, my nose keeps itching. I don't know what's going on. He said, why do you keep playing with his nose? <laughs> my wife said that one time. She was looking at uh, my video. She said, what's wrong with your nose? Verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, uh, you do show the Lord's death till he come. <laughs> Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 28 says, But let every man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. God said, if you take care of it, you have a, a, a responsibility to take the truth that's coming through this word today and apply that thing to your life. Where you see inconsistencies, you have a responsibility to get on your knees and say, God, you're saying it this way, but I'm living it this way. Help me. I want to, I want to be this way, but everything in me is, is doing this way. So, so God, what are we going to do? I need your help. I did the same thing. I did this. Some of you know my testament, my testimony. When I was in the world and doing my worldly stuff as much as I could be big and bad enough to do, I knew it came to a point that I'm going to have to do it God's way. I got on my knees and I asked him, Lord, please help me. And he's been helping me ever since. Somebody say hallelujah to this. I've emptied out my cup. <laughs> That you may fill it up. Yes. Now I'm free. And I just want to be more available to you. Oh, oh Lord. I'm available. Thank you, Jesus. For if you would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the world. Now there's three prayers we pray. One is for the bread and for what it symbolizes. For the cup and what it symbolizes. Then we pray the prayer of forgiveness of sins. So that each and every one of you may participate. Now you may be one of the ones that when you attend a church service, you sit in the back and don't participate in Holy Communion. I encourage everyone to attend because we're already, we're already gonna pray a prayer for the forgiveness of sins because we don't want to discern I, I get it I get it you don't want to fool with these elements being dirty and having yourself full of sin and unforgiveness and, and indecision you don't have to be that way you don't have to stay like that God has open arms ready to receive you now if you're not saved say this with me say Lord I believe that you died on a cross for my sins. Save me now. Come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, my Bible tells me that you're saved. And God has forgiven you of your sins. Your friends might not forgive you. Or your associates. Or maybe people in your family. But God said, I forgive you. And that matters most. Somebody say amen to that. Okay. 
Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the bread and for what it symbolizes. We pray, God, that you would take it from a common use to a spiritual use. You said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And Lord, we thank you. We know that they, they hung you high and stretched you wide. And Lord, we pray for the cup, cup of suffering. You asked in the garden, Father, if there be a way that this, that this cup would pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done is what you said. So, Lord, we thank you for the cup, the cup of suffering. And in this cup, your blood, which was shed on Calvary's cross for each and every one of us. God, I still believe it. As old as I am today, as mature as I am today, and as uh, critical thinking as I am today, I still believe in the elements of the cross. Ah, yes. I have not gone astray from the fundamental teaching of our Christianity. I believe that your blood washes away sins. One songwriter said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? Again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And then, Father, we've already asked you, forgive us of our sins. But let's all pray it again. Say, Father, forgive me. Come on, everybody. Open up your mouth. Say, Father, forgive me of all my sins that I've ever committed. Wash me with your blood. Make me white as snow. I ask this. And I receive. Come on, say it. Say, I receive forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I just want to be more available to you, oh Lord, oh Lord. God bless you, Shanine. I pray you're feeling better. There's nothing for you but to feel better in Christ Jesus. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord, to show someone the way. And enable me to stay. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, listen here. Wait for me. Don't go ahead of me. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. Let's begin. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me let's drink all of it storage is empty. I am available to you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, we are on our way to doing bigger and better things. Let's prepare to give at this time. On our website, www.momentumcm.org, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a Donate Now button, and you can donate. I want to read this thing you're hearing as we prepare to give. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, 
chapter 9, verse 6, he says, But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Come on, everyone say it. I'm a cheerful giver. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to give that, I, that our finances may advance the gospel agenda. That's what you want to do. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency and all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he have dispersed abroad, he have given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your seed and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Let's pray over your seed. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the seed that we sow. You'll hold up your wallet or your checkbook or your uh, credit card or your cell phone <laughs> for pay. Uh, cash at. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the seed that we plant in this ministry. We believe, God, that it will germinate and grow and bring forth some 60, some 30, some 100 full return. We ask in Jesus' name. Have your way right now. We give by faith in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Would you give now? Show someone the way, enable me to stay, oh, my storage. Okay, here, we're going to play, um, let's do this as you all prepare to give. On my way to heaven, on my way to doing better things, on my way to glory. Receiving more than I can receive on my way to see And we also have all the miracles cash app. I've made. Our cash app is dollar sign momentum life. Would you give? To trust please, man, please, sir. You. I'm learning to pray to you, to you. I'm learning to receive from you. Praise God, I see, I see your offerings coming in. Continue to give. Hey! All the miracles, all the miracles, all the miracles for me. Thank you. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your seed, your tithing, your offering. Continue to give. Got my sword and my shield. We win. From heaven. From heaven to earth we, we see. A great and mighty army. A great and mighty army. We go. Where no one has gone before. We win. We win. We win. We have whatsoever we ask for when we pray. We say, Lord, we say, Lord, you have your way. You move like you always done before. You move, you move, you move. Thank you for your liberal distribution. Let's pray, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what our eyes, our eyes have seen what our hearts feel, what our ears hear. Bless the rest of our day, we ask in Jesus' name. We thank you for this fellowship. It is in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Walk with the King and be a blessing. I will follow you.